My guests tonight are the members of the Grammy Award-winning band Vampire Weekend. Their new album is called Only God Was Above Us. Please welcome Ezra Koenig, Chris Bayo, and Chris Thompson. I mean, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, certainly didn't do that when I came out. <laughs> so, you all met while you were at Columbia together, which I'm pointing to uptown. That's right. Um, what, was there a backup plan if this didn't work out? Let, let's, let's start with you, Bayo. Uh, I was gonna maybe teach math for two years. Teach after. math? Yeah, okay. I took the LSAT and stuff. Yeah, and, he uh, aced it, he should say. Yeah. He, he aced it. it. I yeah. did okay. rather well at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I like okay. being a musician better than uh, being a lawyer. What was your backup plan, Ezra? Well, there, there was one year where I had a real job after graduation <laughs> before the band took off, and uh, I taught eighth grade in uh, Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. What did you teach? English. It's out English. Yeah. Okay, well, you have a thing with words. Yeah, Definitely. it's, all, it's yeah. all connected. What about you, C2? I also had a real job for one year. Okay. Uh, not too far from here, I used to work at Sony Music Studios right. as an entry-level tape archivist. Tape archivist? Yeah. Yeah, and that doesn't even exist now, does it? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, your album is tremendous. I, I love you. it. Thank you. The, the song, yeah. I read somewhere that Vampire Weekend has a superb return to form. What, I mean, are we thinking about this in the studio and recording? Are we thinking about our form? What is Vampire Weekend's form? Does that no. annoy you even that someone else is talking about your form? <laughs> it would annoy me a little bit. No, that's what you hope they say every okay. time. Right. <laughs> we return to form. Yeah. We, we went home and we returned to the form. Right, right. Um, <laughs> the, it, it's hard to say because we've made five albums now and they're yeah. all pretty different from yeah. one another. Yeah. It's it's funny. I know it when I hear it. That's right. how I feel about what sounds like Vampire Weekend. Recently, though, a lot of you, I believe, you're, you know, you're your iconic New York City band, but you now live in L.A. I yes. Mean, what the f***? Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, what? We have we have earthquakes here now too. You know. I know. It's true. <laughs> uh, has that done anything for the band? Has it adjusted in you in any way? Let's start with you. I guess it's been really nice all being in the same city for the last okay. five years because we were spread out for a while. I yeah. lived in London for a period of time okay. and I feel like, you know, we hang all the time. We yeah. see each other every week when we're home. It's like really nice. What's, what's your response to LA? Helping the band or hurting the band? Or... It, I like LA and you know, I, yeah. I know a lot of, it, it's it, like any place, it's spent like our producer, Ariel, who produced the, the, this album, yeah. he, born and raised in LA. And I just think anytime you're in a city and you spend time with people who know it, grew up there, love it, you come to love it too. Well, it's a well-trod path. CT, yeah. New York, New York musicians yeah. go to yeah. LA. Yeah. There's always a chance for return. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think there's just a lot of great people out there that we've been able to work with yeah. um, in the studio and live and stuff. It just, it's felt like really vibrant for us, I think. Um, I can certainly say as a comedian, uh, going somewhere new always helps a little bit. Mm. You know, well, yeah, I got some new ideas. In LA, you don't interact with anybody. I'm sitting on the bus now instead. But um, <laughs> um, only God was above us. Explain the title of the album a little bit. Well, we, we we're lucky that, that we found the cover kind of early in the process. And it's this amazing photo yeah. taken by a guy named Steven Siegel, who took all these amazing pictures in 1988. Not that Steven Siegel. No, not that Steven right, Seagal. Okay. It's not Seagal. Steven Seagal. Oh, yeah, excuse me, that's Steven Seagal. <laughs> Who I think's birth was you know probably. You said earlier that if I f up, we're going to edit something yeah. out. That's what we'll edit out. <laughs> I, but I, I, I have a feeling. I think Steven Seagal was probably born Steven Siegel. Absolutely, I think then, you're right. He changed his name. Thank you the, very much. But yeah. so the, there's a photographer, Steven Siegel, and he, the images were all taken in this, what he described as a subway graveyard. So all the yeah. cars were overturned. So he took these really surreal pictures of the, yeah. these gritty '80s New York. Um, Subway cars, and it was such a good image. And I kept thinking, like, where's the Vampire Weekend going to go? And eventually, I realized, why ruin this beautiful image? And the only text on screen yeah. is uh, the newspaper, which is a daily news headline: "Only God Was Above Us." So, at first, I kind of thought, well, that works. But yeah. then, as time went on, I started to feel like this is the perfect title, actually. I also love when a band 
doesn't need to plaster its name all over the place. There's a confidence with that. And that's your oh, fifth good. it's your fifth album, you know, maybe right. that maybe that played into it. I don't know. The song you're going to sing for us, Mary Boone, can you can can you describe a little bit about what who is Mary Boone? What where this uh, come from? Well, Mary Boone's a, a very important figure in the downtown New York art world. Um, came to prominence in the 80s, um, you know, which is an amazing time for New York art. Um, well-known gallerist, and this song is kind of about the, you know, people coming from the, to the city trying to make it. And so, I don't know, I kind of picture the person singing the song as like addressing her, some, like an artist or something who wants to yeah. take it to the next level. Do you remember when this band took it to the next level? Was there a moment when you said, holy shit, we actually have a little bit of money in the bank or we can eat something now? <laughs> I don't have to f teach math the rest of my life. Well, <laughs> no, not, well, one moment where I felt like maybe early on we leveled up was we played our first gig in Brooklyn in 2006 at Pete's Candy Store okay. for, uh, about, for yeah. about 30 people, but yeah. it was the first time. <laughs> They're all here, apparently. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, that we packed it out because that's all it fits, but yeah. we played Mansard Roof, A-Punk, and one of our other songs for, for the, the very time. first time. Okay. And it felt like, really, with us, it was the first time we maybe had enough music to make an album someday. So that was mm. something that was very exciting that I remember. Do you remember leveling up, Ezra? I mean, yeah, there's been so many so small, many levels. small yeah. levels up. I mean, look, like, like you said, the band started in New York. We all have deep New York connections and heritage. So even on our last album, 2019, when we finally played The Garden, I mean, because wow. that's true, from Pete's Candy yeah. Store to the garden. That's why. Yeah. CT, level up. Nobody ever t talks to the, uh, to the drummer, drummer, you know, so this is a big moment. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate you having yes, me out, yes. quite frankly. Um, <laughs> I think the one that comes to mind is the first time we played Glastonbury, which is a big music festival in mm -hmm. England. Okay. And, you know, we're like 24, like 24-year-old knuckleheads, and yeah. all of a sudden we're, we're playing for 50,000 Britons, and it's just right, like, right. oh, my God. Goodness, well, how yeah. did I get here? One of those moments where yeah. it was really mm -hmm. just, I barely remember the set, but I remember the feeling right before it. That's so cool. I say that to myself every time I sit here. How did I get here, and how stupid is everybody else to put me here? <laughs> <laughs> um, you record a lot of this album in New York, London, LA, and Tokyo. I have so yes. many questions. How, why, what, what, how did that transpire? Well, so, I mean, you know, L.A. and New York, we're, we're always in L.A. and New York, but... Um, I just thought a band, like, goes to their studio, and then three weeks later, they drink whiskey, and they fight, and then three weeks later, they have this album. Is that not how it works? If, Am if, I mistaken in my only, assessment of the music industry? If only. If only. Some okay, people nice. are blessed, and it works out that way. Okay, we, we like to take our time, but the... Um, I was living with my family over the last few years for a while in London and then Tokyo, but my wife was working in both those places. So okay. it was good to be somewhere different, have some time apart, and then Ariel came out and we found studios. And so, yeah, we just ended up recording okay. in those cities. Um, the real reason I brought you here today is I want to talk to you about your podcast. Okay? <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, here... Okay, <laughs> all right. Literally, the whole reason you're rock stars is so you don't have to do a podcast. That's you know? a good and point. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a comedian, I'm like, I have to do my podcast. But it's like, you guys don't even have to do a podcast. But, but tell me how this started. What, what is it about? You what? asked me backstage how tall I was. I yes. Know, <laughs> but you, but it seems yeah. like you said we talk about this a lot. What the hell does that mean? Well, uh, <laughs> so... You're like if, you were sizing me up. You're going to kick the shit out of no, me or something? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Just curiosity. Um, so well, we're in a hockey jersey. I mean, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> if you uh, haven't heard our new podcast, it's called Vampire Campfire. <laughs> and they invited their whole studio uh, yeah. but yeah. production I think, crew here. I think one of the origins uh, of it is that in the fall, when the record was almost done, we went up to Oregon for the first ever Vampire Weekend corporate retreat. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> and corporations have been having corporate retreats forever, sure. but I don't think many bands have had corporate retreats. Sure. So yeah. it was very fun. But the last night, we were on the ocean and had a nice fire going yeah. and sort of discussing our plans and stuff like that. And I think it's just really fun to sit around a fire and uh, talk about your future and talk about the things you want to achieve. So that was, like, one of the reasons mm. why we, we did Vampire Campfire or doing Vampire Campfire. For anyone who hasn't listened to it, what, what are we going to find? What are we going to listen well, to we, here? we did talk about height recently. Comparative heights. Which, okay. Just because... So what does that mean? What I'm, does that mean? I'm six feet tall, but I'm yeah. the shortest member of the band. Yeah. Because these two guys are in six two. So we, yeah. people always ask which one of them is taller. Okay. It's actually him. Oh. Some people think it's... So we were talking okay. about our... 
Yeah. Got us interested. That was actually in, my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and and so we got kind of interested in our relative heights and also the height of the fictional character Jack Reacher. Yeah. Because the the character is taller than the actor who plays him. Correct. And you're somewhere between the actor and the character. And, and, and I'll, I'll let you talk in a second, but I was furious <laughs> yeah. when Tom Cruise played right. Jack Reacher. I mean, it was like this is, but the the, the I love that show. That show is male ego at its finest, I isn't it? it. I, I just that. want to get a cup of coffee. I don't want anyone to bother me. Oh shit! I have to kill everybody. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, what's the podcast do, do for you? What, what, well, you know, I think. Uh, a big part of being in a band yeah. is, can I say bullshitting? Oh my God, uh, yes, please. And just kind of like chopping it up on yes. the bus yeah. and airports. Yeah. Like there's a lot of sitting near each other while in motion. Right. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of the biggest part of being in a band. True. Um, and yeah, I think we just were thinking about this record and how it feels and how it feels for us to be together. And it was just kind of felt like, yeah. oh, this is something we're kind of doing anyways. Like this is something we could share and it contextualizes in a cool way. Who doesn't want to hang out with their favorite band? And that's what the podcast can be. So Vampire yeah. Weekend, uh, Bayo, Ezra, CT, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Only God was about